Hi, uh, this is the first of three slides where I want to do a better, more thorough, in-depth job of explaining how do we go out and listen to target customers in our number one niche to better understand uh, deeper needs and, and metrics for what service value is for them. Um, the first guideline is ideally we have to go out and try to be kind of what I call a, a mentally blank slate anthropologist. A good anthropologists go and they, they observe Aboriginal cultures and they don't, they try to be totally non-judgmental. They just try to be the, the people that are there and see the world through their eyes and just try to understand how the ecosystem grew up to be the way it is. So we're going to go out and we're going to follow the paperwork and the product through the place and talk to everybody and say, gee whiz, what about this? And notice odd things and so forth. Uh, but there is a little bit of method to this, this open-minded madness. Um, the first thing I want to do when I go out and call on a supplier, a customer, is to decide, are they proactive and are they value buyers? And the way I do that is I say, to just be very frank with me. Tell me, who is your number one, two, three vendor as far as total spend dollars? Uh, in the category that I represent in your brain, you know, uh, uh, this kind of vendor, and do you have other vendors like me? And and um, so what are the rankings, and have they changed over the last two, three, four years? And if so, why would you switch volume from one to another? So that's sort of the first part of a two-part question. And they say, well, you know, to be honest, Bruce, uh, you get 25% of the business, and this other guy gets 35, the other guy gets the balance. Um, and here's why the lion share guy gets the lion share. It didn't always used to be that way. He was number two, but then I switched to number one because number two goofed up and so forth. But, you know, here's my frustration with you guys kind of thing. Now, the second part of the question might be, and by the way, do you have going forward uh, any key sort of supply chain, total procurement cost, uptime, next service value step, uh, objectives or metrics that you're trying to achieve? Uh, a variation of that would be if the person is a, a full-time vice president of, of supply chain. Uh, how, what's your, what's your charter? What are your objectives? How do you get measured at the end of the year? How, how can I, you know, take care of your service needs and make you look better and let's push your agenda further along. And here you're not going to, you're going to get a lot of blank looks from people because that's asking them to be proactive and innovative uh, in their buy sell process, you know, re-engineering and not a lot are. So you want to just kind of say, you know, just by the way, you know, anything, you know, yes or no kind of thing. Um, but right away, if they say, well, you know, I buy everything I can from this guy around the corner because we're family uh, and I've been doing it for 20 years. And the guy looks like he's old enough that he could be doing it for another 40 years, 20 years. You know, forget it. They're loyal. They are married to somebody else. They're not going to be buying my better value economic story. Uh, and if I am getting business from them, you know, it may be because I have the cherries. In other words, they call their number one buddy and whatever he doesn't have, they call their number two buddy. And whatever he doesn't have, they call me. So I can then, if they're a big losing account, I can, I can play hardball with them. We'll come back to how we deal with cherry pickers in future slides. But that's the, to just sort of try to get a fix on how value-oriented they are, how proactive they are. Those are the questions I ask. The next thing I do is, is instead of saying, uh, what's good service? Or what else would you like to have? Because they'd say stuff like 15 different price cuts, uh, you know, infinite trade credit, uh, free this, free that, whatever. Um, that's every product. I don't want to go there. So what I ask is, all right, when you think of us or people like us, what are some of the stories that you could share that there were service failures? It was pain. It cost you money. It was downtime. It was frustration. I didn't come to mind. And they think about it. and They all get red in the face. They start to tell, tell a story. Listen carefully, because the opposite of that is a service metric opportunity, and it may have a quirk aspect to it. Um, because then you might, after getting into the story, that's when you might start to ask a little bit more direct questions as opposed to open-ended questions. Um, and you're going to ask a little bit more about, about the context or, you know, why is that or da-da-da. Well, what if something unusual happened, you know? Uh, these kinds of questions. Uh, and these are all the kinds of questions I ask when I'm actually doing the audit, going through the business, talking to the different people who use the product, mess with the paperwork, need to talk to some or all of uh, you know my people on my side of the fence. Um, so 
those are some of the, 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 the guidelines that I do. Now, the next slide, I want to get into specific service uh, metric definitions, because if you know those, that's going to help with your, your, your more direct questions that you ask uh, the customer to un unveil what I call s s our service quirks. Thank you.